A lot can be said about Rihanna and Drake's hit song work. It completely owned the charts in 2016. Its dance hall beat and endless repetition were the ultimate example of where the sound of pop was going. It did everything most Top 40s hits were doing, except for one thing. It faded out. Let me start by making a confession here. I used to hate when songs faded out. It felt like a cop-out, a lack of creativity, a boring anti-ending to a song that I otherwise really loved. It turns out that this is the wrong opinion. The fade-out is misunderstood and underappreciated. There's an art to it, a science to it, and when executed correctly, the fade-out makes a song feel like it'll live on forever. This chart, which is pretty cool, shows the number of songs that had a fade out on the Billboard Top 10 from 1946 to 2016. It was made by this guy. Uh, my name is Bill Weir, and I'm a writer, mostly about music and specifically about technology of music and the history of the music technology. So the chart starts in 1946, but the story of the fade out actually begins in 1918. Gustav Holtz was conducting his world famous piece, The Planets, and he devised a unique way to convey the distance of Neptune, at the time the farthest known planet in the solar system. So he wanted to create this sense of almost unimaginable distance and the mysteriousness of the cosmos. He had the women's choir offstage in a room and he instructed a stagehand to slowly close the door to create the effect of it fading out and going off into the distance. People love that, it went over huge. I mean, today we take the fade out for granted, but I mean, 1918, this was like a whole new, whole new sonic adventure for them. In the early days, the fade out was a novelty. It was really only used to convey real world scenarios like distance and space. That is until the 1950s and 60s, when sound recording wasn't just used to preserve a live performance, it became its own art form. The fade out quickly became a creative and functional tool for record producers. Functional because radio DJs demanded songs be three minutes or less. If the album version was longer, producers would typically cut a shorter radio-friendly version that faded during the chorus. Fade-outs were also used to fix flubs. Here's the full waveform for Strawberry Fields Forever. You can see a really long fade-out, and then it suddenly starts coming back. George Martin, the Beatles producer, wasn't crazy about the percussion towards the end of the song, and so he faded the song out. But then he hears all the great music that happens after the fade out that the Beatles continued to play, and he hated to waste that. So he faded back in. Not only is there an art to the fade out, there's a science to it also. Here's Susan Rogers. To do a fade properly, uh, you have to do something called chasing the fade. So we know from the Fletcher Munson curves that our ears don't perceive frequencies of sound equally when played at the same volume. If you've got the speakers cranked, you're hearing approximately equal levels of bass, mid-range, and high end. But as soon as you turn the level down, it becomes really hard to hear the high highs and the low lows. But you can hear the mid-range very well. If you lowered everything equally, the singer would just be hanging out there all by themselves. You can hear that on Prince's Slow Love, which Susan worked on. The fade out became so ubiquitous that by 1985, all top 10 songs of the year had one. But there's something more to the fade out than being another fashionable trend in music. When psychologists studied how different types of song endings affected our experiences with them, they found something pretty amazing. The researchers, they, they had a group of subjects listen to the same song, but two different versions. One with a fade out, one with a cold ending. And they had them tap along to the beat of each version. If a song had a hard ending, participants on average stopped tapping along to the beat 1.04 seconds before the end of the song. If it had a fade out, they stopped tapping along to the beat 1.4 seconds after the song ended. In a sense, that song was living beyond its physical self in the mind of a listener. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
That might help explain why the Beatles' seven-minute Hey Jude has a fade-out that's about as long as their entire early singles. Hey Jude was released after the Beatles stopped touring. They didn't need to perform it live. Well, until they did this one TV performance. It's my pleasure to introduce now in their first live appearance for goodness knows how long in front of an audience, the Beatles. It took at least 12 takes, a lot of editing, and a visual fade to black to recreate the same epic fade out of the recorded version. The Fade Out was such a long-lasting record-making tool. It was used in some of the biggest hits for decades. But its future isn't looking so great. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of sad because the the Fade Out's demise is kind of a replication of the effect itself, in that it's actually literally fading out in popular music and so slowly and gradually that I think most people don't even notice. There are plenty of songs over the last few years that would have been better served with the fade out, like Gautier's Somebody That I Used to Know. It just suddenly ends, and they, they threw a tom or something in there, they just went boom. And it sounds so pasted on to my ear. Bruno Mars's 24K Magic and That's What I Like have abrupt endings too, when they sound like they could fade out forever. Pick any number of songs these days, and those pasted-on endings are the norm. Want to know what work sounds like with a hard ending? It's terrible. The fade-out, it turns out, is important and often necessary. It's a tool in a record producer's arsenal that makes us tap our feet along even after our ears perceive the very last notes. And I hope, just like the ending of Strawberry Fields Forever, it comes back. It's hard to say whether or not the fade out will actually be as prominent as it was 30 or 40 years ago. Um, I just looked at the Billboard Top 40 for today and only three songs had legitimate fade outs that I could find. Uh, Those three songs are actually a really good hint for the next Earworm episode. So go listen to the Billboard Top 40, try to find those three songs and let me know what you think the next episode is gonna be about. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.